All right, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Zachary Adler, and I'll be presenting Superpoint Self Supervised Interest Point Detection and Description uh, by Ditto and Ital. So, a uh, question for the class to start out with is How is homographic adaptation different than standard data augmentation? Uh, this is just something to think about as we go through, um, and this is a technique which um, we'll discuss through the presentation. So, the motivation for Superpoint it's an interest point detection model which is critical for multiple view geometry. So you want to find points that correspond between your two uh, views of the same scene so that you can do structure promotion and other tasks. Um, the classical techniques for this that we have are like SIFT. So the problem with those, however, is that, well, it's not so much a problem, but we would rather be able to use the curated data sets of today, you know, Coco and ImageNet to be able to learn uh, better representations and achieve better performance than those classical techniques. Um, however, if you try and do, you know, normal supervised learning for this task, the task of labeling your interest points can be a little bit in, uh, ill-defined. So if you sit two humans down and ask them to label interest points between your two uh, views of the same scene, they might label different spots, and that's a problem for repeatability and um, just overall performance. So the uh, Superpoint model approaches this with a self-supervised approach by using homographic adaptation, which we'll go over in the next slide. And it also uh, is a deeper model than previous works that use unsupervised approaches. So homographic adaptation is this technique where you have your unlabeled image and you have your base detector and you're going to obtain pseudo ground truth labels by using your base detector on your unlabeled image. Now, if you just directly apply your base detector to achieve your labels, that might not be very good because then you would just learn what your base detector does. So instead what they do is apply n random generated uh, homographies to your unlabeled image to warp it. Then they would apply the base detector to those warped images get those point responses, and then unwarp it according to the inverse of the homography, and then finally aggregate all those together to achieve your final heat map. So the equation at the bottom of the screen just details what you see at the top. You have your eye, which is your image, which is then fed into your, well, transformed by the homography H sub i, which then you have your x sub theta, which is the base detector, achieving your, getting your labels for that, and then lastly, inverse homography is applied to that, and then aggregate it all together. So what is the base detector that they actually use for this um, in Superpoint? That is trained on a data set called Synthetic Shapes, which you see in the top left some examples for that. It's generated quadrilaterals, triangles, lines, and ellipses, along with interest points, which are consistent across the different views, which are basically just the corners and endpoints and uh, centers of those shapes. The actual Superpoint model is shown on the right. That's a standard encoder decoder model with a shared encoder, which is just like a fully uh, convolutional network with uh, convolutional layers, uh, max pooling, etc. But then you have two heads for the decoder. You have your interest point decoder, which will actually obtain your interest points, and then you have your descriptor decoder. Now, these are actually not learned, the decoders. They are just using, for the interest point decoder, it uses softmax and reshape, and then for the descriptor decoder, it uses an, a bicubic interpolation and an L2 norm. So there's nothing learned in the decoders to improve performance or uh, like efficiency. Now, the loss shown at the bottom is going to be the loss for the whole network, and it's actually combined, so it uses both the decoder loss, uh, the descriptor decoder loss, and the interest point decoder loss. And those are basically just cross entropy for the interest point decoder and a hinge loss for the descriptor decoder. And the actual variables used at the bottom, we have x, which is your image, and then x prime is just that same image transformed by some random homography, and then y and y prime are the corresponding pseudo ground truth labels that were generated by homographic adaptation. So um, the actual experiment, it was trained on COCO images, and it was evaluated on H patches, which is a data set of scenes and various views of those same scenes that you can do uh, matching across them. The performance was uh, fairly comparable in repeatability and mean localization error, and it outperformed lift, sift, and orb in uh, nearest neighbor mean average precision and matching score. It also just visually produced uh, good, you know, dense results and correct matches compared to the other algorithms. So, uh, key takeaways, we have that homographic adaptation enables good self-supervised learning. So this is a technique that we can use in the future for this task. And transfer knowledge from synthetic data is achievable 
uh, when you want to just you know, apply it to real world images, that that's actually something that works as we see since they use synthetic shapes and then apply it to real world images like Coco. Uh, key limitations, we have synthetic shapes has corners with high contrast, which may not transfer to lower contrast settings. And also the compute time can get expensive if you use a lot of homographies because then you're applying your uh, base detector many, many times. Um, so just to reiterate the question that I went over at the beginning, um, how is homographic adaptation different than standard data augmentation? But um, other than that, uh, thank you. Um, does anyone want to venture their input? Uh, I can go back to the slide, um, which showed it. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, I mean, it does use um, data augmentation kind of as part of it with the homography warping, but it's the goal of homographic adaptation is actually to generate the pseudo-ground truth labels so that you can use those for training later. Um, that's basically it. Yeah, so um, what you're doing here is um, also the effect that you want to create, which is common for a lot of these interest point detection and also pose estimation methods in the integrator is that you want to work with maps. And the assumption is that the base detector will perform slightly differently for different augmented versions of the of the image. And aggregating them together gives you a heat map out here, which is used for just for detection here, but you could also potentially use it for things like uncertainty And for pose estimation, you see later that uncertainty is useful. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, is this adaptation done before the training of the encoder decoder network, or is it done uh, alongside it? So first, the base detector is trained. Then, homographic adaptation is used to obtain pseudo-ground truth labels that are used to train the super point algorithm or model. Thank you. Questions? So, uh, since uh, there's like a slight, uh, like you said, there will be a slight difference in the way the base detector acts on the different homographies of the image. Uh, so. Is there any possibility of some sort of noise or some uh, some some interest points which maybe we don't want, or is there any training procedure or something like that? that yeah, I mean, if the interest points, the interest points that you don't want are kind of removed by the aggregation of your uh, different heat maps, so uh, it should be visible across the different homographies. And if it is, then that's a good interest point. And by taking the average, you kind of only keep the ones that are visible across them. So we are transforming the uh, base image uh, using uh, this homographic adaptations. So can't we just use those adaptations to um, learn the base detector itself so that um, you can just pass in a single image and then finally get all the all the key points maybe present in the image. Do we require homographic key points and then pass each of them to the base detector separately? You, you would need a base detector to do this technique in the first place. So you can't train the base detector using this. I mean, you could train a, no, a new one using the previous one, I guess. Okay. Which would be something else to consider. 